the place is still buzzing about that very, very near thing there for Owen Larkin. Yeah, and Jared, the thing there is that ball was played in by Richie Hogan into Owen Larkin. Stopped there, you can see clearly stopped by Paul Corn. But Owen, uh, Richie Hogan did attempted to play the ball in. Tommy Walsh with another great catch there. You can see it here, just stopped on the line. You but have to admire the composure of Paul Curran to go back that it, time. He was very cool, but Richie Hogan actually picked out Owen Larkin in, in, in just about a yard of space in behind Paul Curran and Tommy Walsh with two great catches and he won another free there. So Kilkenny much the happier in the opening quarter of an hour of this match. This free hit forward here by Paul Murphy. It's going to drop around 20 metres out. Gathered in well there by Porik Maher once again. Slipping the hand pass out to Shane McGrath. Yet to exert a real influence on this game. And he's hand passed it away to Michael Rice. Slipping it back out towards Richie Power. Has a support player outside, but he doesn't need him. Hitting it off his left-hand side and drilling it over the bar. What a start this is for the Cats. They were the outsiders in the minds of many, many people before the start of this final, but they got the opening four points. Yeah, Jerry, Michael Fenley there, I mentioned it before the game, he was there 40 yards with his own goal, stopped Shane McGrath in his tracks, here's Tommy Walsh with his great catches, but uh, Michael Fenley made that score and Richie Power, you know, shown that he has a turn of taste as well and over the bar and, uh, as you say, Kilkenny all over Tipperary at this stage. They've imposed themselves on the game from a very early stage and they've won it again in their own half-back line and it's Tommy Walsh one-handed, getting it out to his captain, Brian Hogan and Hogan firing it away up towards Colin Fennelly, putting Michael Cahill under pressure. Fennelly taking it, looking around, nice and calm, firing it with accuracy. It's got to drop short, and once again Brendan Cummins takes it, and it's deflected away from him, off the goalkeeper, it's a 65. Well, he's challenging the umpire down there, who is uh, PJ Lawler, and the referee has changed his mind and decided that it's gone wide, it's not going to be a 65. Yeah, Colin Fenley there maybe better play, better off there to play that ball across. You know, he played it right on top of Brendan Cummins, but uh, he's very, very good so far. That's a terrible talk out because it's gone straight to Kilkenny under no pressure. Jackie Turrell fires it back again. Paul Curran's been busy. Hand pass to the middle of the field. It's deflected back by Eddie Brennan this time. Michael Cahill now finding it difficult to get it away. Helped by Paddy Stapleton. The entire Tipperary full back there under pressure. What about that for a catch from Tommy Walsh? Wonderful athleticism to get it across here. But sh throw the shoulders by Henry Shefflin and decisively over the bar. A second point for Shefflin. The 32 year old from Ballyhale Shamrocks makes it five points to nil. Jared, that is an absolutely brilliant score. Just look at Tommy Walter, look at the bravery. He's not he's not a big man flying through the air. And just watch watch his uh, delivery then. A diagonal ball straight to Henry Shefflin and two of the greatest players, I suppose, of all time combining there for a great score. And Tipperary are shell shocked, Jared. They can't get the ball out of their full back line, half back line. Eddie Brennan is tackling Colin Fenley, they're blocking and turning them. And Paul Cornow down with an injury. Brendan Maher had been warmed up, and there's huge pressure now on the Tipperary sideline to, to get something going out the pitch and for Tipperary to get a score on the board. And they're going to need a few leaders to stand up. Well, the pressure's on the management team of uh, Declan Ryan, Tommy Dunn, and Michael Gleeson. They made the call not to start Brendan Maher. That was a very, very contentious issue down in Tipperary during the week. Yeah, well, it's not just one player out there. You know, all the Tipperary players are under pressure and they're going to need a score or two just to get themselves settled into the game. So far, there's no stopping Tommy Welch from the half-back line. That's for certain, as the puck out comes once again. And once again, Michael Rice competing for it there with Garrod Ryan, flicks it forward. On comes Porik Maher to it. That's a much better ball. Into Noel McGrath. Can he get the opening score for the Premier men? He can. It's taken them 16 minutes. But it's a start. And there's only four between them, and yeah. anything can happen in this final. And a brilliant score, a great ball by Park Maher, who has started well in fairness to him, and down to Norman Grant, not an easy chance, and straight over the bar, and maybe that can settle him down. But I'm just watching the Kilkenny backs, Bonner Maher has gone corner for Tommy Walsh has stayed on him, Jackie Terrell is back out on the wing on Lark Corbett, so obviously they're taking up a man marking JJ Delaney's on Seamus Callan and Noel Hickey's on Owen Kelly, and they're going to stick with them for the game. From the puck out, it's uh, Conor O'Mahony comes out, attacks the ball there, but it breaks back once again, and as Henry Shefflin is going forward, the referee says he took too many steps with it this time. And it's going to be a free out for Tipperary. They'll be glad of the respite, you can be sure. Watch it again here. Henry... Yeah, it looked harsh enough, you know, referees yeah. are they're always looking out for it. It's hard to see there on the replay because we, we didn't see him winning possession. Especially but when the referee is behind hard. Henry and he can't see whether the ball's on his stick or not. This time it's Seamus Calden. Throw of the shoulders, gets by JJ Delaney, hits in the shot, but it comes back once again by Brian Hogan, way down the field, down towards Richie Hogan. Challenge there by Paddy Stapleton. 
still very much in play. And that shot from uh, way out the field has gone to the right. Missed opportunity, a third wide now. That time Henry Shefflin putting it wide of the target from the quick fuck out. And it comes here into the hands of John O'Brien, who is seasoned campaigner, this man. And he's dragged down by Paul Murphy, who's playing in his first final. And it'll be a free to Tipperary. They won't panic. They're four points behind. They have a free upcoming here, and there's a chance for them to put this one over the, the bar via Owen Kelly. Yeah, and uh, Jared Henry Shefflin, to me, is winning an awful lot of possession. He's after poking two wides that he'd normally score, and he has John O'Keefe, you know, who's in his first all Ireland final, to be fair to him. He has him under a lot of pressure, and, you know, someone of Brendan Maher's ability and big match temperament, I think he's too good to be on the sideline, even early on in the game. But this is a big free now, you know, close the gap and really set him down to it. Kelly hitting it inside the right-hand post, over the bar neatly. Second attempt to take a free, first point, and it's five points to two. But that has always been a Kilkenny tactic. When you've got a new rookie player in a team, it's John O'Keefe this year, you put your best player on it. Yeah, well, Kilkenny have always done that, yeah, as you said, Jerem. Um, but I think, you know, Tipperary now is maybe getting up to the pace of the game now and settling down, and, and it's a great game so far. It's settling down to be a Rutgers final, that's for sure. Once again, the battle in the middle of the park as the sun comes out, and the uh, rain is thankfully a distant memory. Lights are still on, the referee's going to throw the ball in. I think we can afford to save the electricity very shortly because it's not really necessary. It's a nice, pleasant afternoon now, and such a good match. Porik Maher helping it forward there, sun in the eyes of Seamus Callanan going in after it there, still chasing it. This time, Noel McGrath pursued vigorously in there by Noel Hickey. Real stalemate. In the end, it's Patrick Bonner Maher, and again, the referee sees the foul and gives the free in. And it hots up, and Kilkenny make it very, very awkward for Patrick Bonner Maher. And did the referee get a little nick there as somebody was passing by? And it happened. He did. In the past, in other matches I could remember, and he's going to require yeah. attention. There you are, I think a stick just going by, passing him, accidentally touched the referee. And he's going to uh, require attention. He won the free, Michael, but uh, yeah. they were unhappy about it. I think they probably felt he had held on too long. Yeah, he got a right clip on the nose there, um, but he could, might have been... Sh sh he said Tommy Walsh, actually. It looked like Tommy Walsh has hurled through the crowd. I'm not saying he was trying to hit the ref, but he did hit him. <laughs> a, he hit him right down through the nose. I won't, uh, a lot of us would have wanted to do it over the years, maybe. Hurling, but <laughs> you couldn't do it. But uh, Bonner Maher has shown his strength there, but, uh, you know, a little bit of a scuffle. And so far, you can see, see the ref... The blood sub rule, I'm sure, applies here as well. It does, yeah. He, he's going to have to get that attended to. I don't think Cahill McAllister recently as well. He got a bloody nose. But I think, uh, I don't think he was hit with a stick on that occasion. There's some wonderful shots here in our slow-mo. Fabulous images from the hurling final of 2011. Five points to two. Held up for a while by the Kilkenny... Uh, Doctor, Dr. Ty Crowley comes out here, renders first aid on our match referee. Yeah, and I suppose you're a significant thing really here now is that, you know, Tipperary have settled that this is going to be three points on the board now after all the hurling Kenny did in the first 20 minutes. I think maybe they really needed to get a goal there in that period. You know, they were so dominant, but they didn't do it, and Tip now have settled into the game. There's a picture uh, for tomorrow's front page. Fabulous scene of Croke Park. Basking in sunshine at this stage. There's another scene. Referee might want to have it on the paper tomorrow but there he is the bandaged uh, referee I, from Clara I'd say it was I'd say it was a fair belt uh, Jerry at the time it looked like a fairly uh, there was a fair bit of contact in it and you know hopefully it won't affect his performance well the uh, standby referee of course is Barry Kelly from West B. he's on the if line you just watch Tommy Walsh just come over the top oh yeah and, yeah you know it's a, it's a fair dig it wasn't just a little tip and uh, I don't know what the rule there is an accidentally hitting the ref I don't think that's in the rule book but uh, you just ne watch it there. Next thing you know, referees will have to wear helmets as well. And face guards. Nasty incident, very unusual <laughs> incident to see in the final. Yeah, of course it is. Th Tommy looks as innocent as ever. Now, in the, the, the last match here, the semi-final, I think Cahill McAllister had a bloody nose, but uh, wasn't hit by anybody, and he needed to get attention as well. And I can remember the same Cork referee getting... Uh, uh, a cut to his head also at a match at Nolan Park two years ago, I think it was, when Kilkenny were playing, I think, Waterford. 
very you know, rare occurrence. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see Jared half time too. You know the injury time now because um, you know I'm a fan of the clock. I think you know when it should be stopped. There should be someone taking control of it. It's usually it's a minute or two or three minutes. But how long is it since you know we might have a look at it here, get a chance? It's three minutes and counting just on this incident, and we'd have, have it, we've had a couple of more. So it'll be interesting to see like for for the ref to get a belt like that and then try to keep. Tra- track of how much injury time as well you know on top of it it's difficult if it were a player Michael also he would have had to change his shirt he would and he would have had to leave the field so we're in new territory but, uh, he's okay as the two of two doctors looking after Kevin Delargy I think was uh, there Tony Crowley was the Kilkenny official looking after the match official here and after all of that, four minutes of stoppage, we can have uh, this free, which will be taken by Owen Kelly. He's pointed one already from a distance. And this to put two points between the teams, it's no problem to him. 5 3, 23 minutes gone. And a uh, quick little chat among the officials. They had been contemplating a change, I'm sure. Might delay that. Yeah, I think they will. They probably had a plan, you know, for Brendan Maher later in the game. So, you know, now the tip have settled, I'm sure they'll hold off. So, from David Herity's puck out then, back with the action once again, the real action. John O'Keefe now running into Henry Shefflin. What an opponent to be up against in your opening All Ireland final. Coming out to help there was Paddy Stapleton. Again, Shefflin got the stick to it, fed it forward. Porik Maher covering, beating the attempted block of Richie Hogan. Flies up into the air, Richie Power this time taking it down, crossing the 45 metre line. Power going forward can be a dynamic forward on as far as Eddie Brennan and Brennan puts it high and puts it over the bar. His first point, a man who scored three goals and 12 points in three of the last four finals, got nothing last year, but uh, as a result of a wonderful run by Richie Power, fed beautifully to Eddie Brennan, couldn't miss from there. Yeah, and obviously Richie Power's game plan today is when he gets the ball, to take them on. You know, he's very, very pacey, powerful hurler, and a great ball off to Eddie Brendan. Eddie tapped it over the bar. Maybe in the past, maybe he would have went for the goal. Interesting how Kilkenny are lining up in the forward line as they intended and as they were programmed. Doesn't happen all that terribly often. In the middle of the field here is Shane McGrath for Tipperary. Out towards John O'Keefe, putting pressure on him, and in comes Shefflin, and O'Keefe runs into difficulty, and it ends up being a line ball. Yeah, it just like one one of those days that looks just looks like Henry Shefflin has got inside John O'Keefe's head. You know, a simple ball there to pick up, and uh, Shefflin's blocking him every time he gets it, and he's winning loads of possession. And I think that change is going to be made. Yeah, Tipperary uh, contemplating bringing on Brendan Maher very shortly. It would appear as that line ball is cut up there, putting the pressure once again on the backs. And the referee saw a foul. He's uh, pointing the finger at uh, Eddie Brennan, and it's going to be a free out. For Tipperary. This will be 30 metres from the Tipperary goal. A man who scored in last year's final, of course, Brendan Cummins. And the Tipperary fans have now spotted the fact that Brendan Maher is being readied and prepared to come into this All Ireland final. Brendan Cummins takes the free. It's a huge one. Dropping down there. Can anybody get to it? Not quite. It's one of the best efforts of John O'Brien. I think he was really going for it that time, Brendan Cummins. Fancied his chances. He was, Jerry, but one of the first things you're taught as a young lad is to get in behind the end line. And, you know, John O'Brien was trying to follow the ball in there and block it out. He should have been on the end line and, and in position, and he wasn't. But, you know, typical maybe of where things are not going as well for Tipperary as they did last year. Light switched off. Plenty of sunlight overhead. Natural light as uh, David Herity pucks this ball out again. Targets Henry Shefflin. Batted it down this time. Then it's up to the other Tip. Kilkenny prayers to try and pick up the pieces picked up instead here by Noel McGrath from the middle of the field up towards the full forward position and again it is Kilkenny fighting strongly for everything in there not giving a thing to the Tipperary forwards this year shoring it up really well and out comes Tigerish Paul Murphy who's given some added assurance to that backline this year up as far as Eddie Brennan slipped across here towards Henry Shefflin Again, from 45 metres out, that's it fly in there, but only as far as Brendan Cummins. Last thing the manager will want to see is the goalkeeper getting it, because they can knock it way down the field with that huge clearance. And what about that for Tommy Welch coming? 